Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Natalie with Natalie's Closet. Let's see what's been... You guys have been active. <laughs> Crocheting in a... Well, first of all, hello, Angela. Hey, Granny D, Cameron, Leanne, Miley. No, Deneen. Welcome, everyone. Let me catch up. Angela saying, crocheting an Among Us character for a friend's daughter. I'll be listening and putting my two cents in now and then. Oh, by the way, I love the yarn store tour. Can't wait for the next one. Oh, I know. I'm excited about the next one, too. But I'm glad you're liking it so far. Um, yep, I'll be listening and lurking. No problem, Granny D. Uh, see you all soon. And sleeping, D. I am working on three more pocket shawls and listening. I think this is number 41, 42. Wow, 43 this season. That's craziness. Well, awesome. Uh, grab your beverage of choice and a whip. Sit back and relax. Kick your shoes off and join in the chat with Natalie. Not long now. You're so funny, Leanne. Absolutely. Okay. Up. Oh. Come on. You can make it. Good girl. Um, yeah. hello, Granny D. Right, Leanne, here we go. Ad time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching the ads. Anyway, I feel bad because, um, I, uh, had the nerve to lay back and take a break from the blanket. I, I today has been crazy. I mean, I, I've been up since this morning, went to work, didn't get home until like 5, 15-ish. We ate, then recorded a video for our other channel um, that's going to post tomorrow. And I walked into my place about 8, 8, 20, 8, 30. And I sat down, was working on the blanket. We're not talking about the blanket right now. We will maybe in a little bit. But so I laid back and I fell asleep. And that, it must have been like maybe 9 o'clock, maybe 9.15. And I was like, I need to set my alarm. I need to set my alarm. And evidently I fell asleep. And then I woke up like 12 minutes. No, that was maybe about 9.10. I fell asleep and I woke up. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> so quick potty break or let you guys know I'll be in. And yeah, so it's been kind of just nonstop today. So if I look like I just woke up, it's because I did just wake up from like a 10-minute nap. Um, how is everyone doing? I am crocheting a chevron scarf from Jada and Stitches. Oh, cool. Hey, everyone. Hey, Don, welcome. Hey, Mayor, welcome. How are you guys? Uh, so anyway, I'm glad you guys are enjoying or you guys ha liked the first um, tour that we went on together. Like I mentioned, I've done four tours. Wait. Yeah, four tours. Now, the third one is actually going to be another stash. There are two stashes, one in St. Pete, one in Tampa. Completely different. Um, I mean, but different. Mm. Um, same owner. And uh, crap, I forgot to send him a link to the video. Um, anyway, but the second one was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I, I learned a lot. And a yarn that I'd heard of is like it, there, that store is like the hub for it because it's the daughter of the owner of that store who started this line of yarn. And she has amazing stuff. But anyway, that'll be next Monday. I'm not saying anymore. <laughs> um, Hey, Donna, welcome. Hey, sweet girl, Miley and Larissa. Hello. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Hey, Don, Cameron, Donna, D D D D okay, saying hello. Now back to lurking, no problem. Hello, everyone. Love the tour. Good. I'm glad to hear that, Angela. I'm working on a shirt that I'm designing for my oldest granddaughter. Oh, cool. Hey, Granny D. Hi, Granny D. Um, and not every, I don't know that each video is going to be that as long as this one. This one, I also did my uh, New Year's resolution. Um, I introduced what was happening on Mondays. Um, and I don't know that the wool information is going to be quite as long as the super or the Merino wool was, but, um, yeah, anyway, I, I appreciate those of you that did watch it, um, from start to finish. Hey, Judy, welcome. Hi, Natalie. Hi, everyone. My internet is very sporadic tonight. Not sure why. So I just want to say hello, but won't stay. Everyone have a wonderful evening. You too. Thank you so much for stopping by though. I really appreciate it. I hope your internet gets fixed though. Hey again, Judy. You too, Judy. Hello, hello, Natalie and all live peeps in Natalie's closet. Hello, Leanne. Hey, sweet Judy. Judy, I enjoyed your video. I'm so far behind again on videos because 
now with working on the blanket, like every two seconds, okay, I'm not talking about the blanket right now, um, and trying to make sure that I have all the information I need for the videos, it's been quite interesting. But um, I am going to catch up again. Maybe not completely, but I will catch up to a degree. Uh, yes, the shop tour and the info afterwards was very nice. Good. I'm glad you liked it. Hey, Mayor Sweeney. Um, I'm going to go get, I forgot to bring a bag of TREATSs for her. I'm going to go grab them. And um, then in a little bit, I'll put the sheet on her bed. I'm going to try to not be any longer than two hours max because I really need to work on the blanket for several more hours. Here I keep saying it, but I'm not talking about it right now. Um, so don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Uh, I don't, okay, you guys say hello to each other. Ow, I'll be right back. Bye. Well, this is a little bad, but it'll do. Oh, yeah, and I wanted to show you the yarn again from um, more intimate, intimate conversations. Lay down of the yarn that I showed you from Stash. I got to tell you, though, okay, the experiences I've had with the four tours have been awesome. The fourth one started out maybe a little... Like I wasn't sure how it was going to be, but it turned out to be awesome. But Jose with Stash is just phenomenal. I mean, he it just, I mean, to literally be willing to just drop what he's doing and go open the store. I mean, when I called him yesterday to confirm about the online shopping, he was closed. I forgot that they're closed on Mondays. And so I realized that when he answered the phone and I was like, Oh my gosh, Jose, I'm so sorry. I forget. Or I'm like, Hey, it's Natalie, Michael. How are you? And he's like, good. How are you? Um, you know, I heard you were in Tampa also, you know, dot filled me in. Da, da, da. That's so awesome. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, you know what? I need to hire you for my it and social media stuff. <laughs> I, I kind of giggled and I'm assuming he was joking, but, um, and, He's like, hey, do you need, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I forgot you're closed on Mondays. I'm so sorry for bothering you on your day off. He's like, hey, you need me to jump by the store and open it up for you? <laughs> I was like, thank you. I really appreciate it. But no, I I just have a question for you. And I'm like, you know, and I swear that would be how he would be for anybody that called him. You know, it wasn't just because I built a rapport with him. But that's another thing I'm loving is I'm building a rapport with these new stores. And I'm honest to God would go Okay, his store isn't that far. No big deal. It's in my county. The one in his store in Tampa, no big deal. Um, and the one, the other one that I'm not telling you the name of or where it's located yet, uh, is a bit further. I'm going to say probably about 75 miles away. Honestly, I'll be going there again, too. Whether it's just to hang out and crochet, which, of course, I'd be the only crocheter. They're all knitters, but um, she totally understood. She's like, hey, I'm a yarn snob. I, I, she goes, I, I know she doesn't, I don't think she crochets, but she's like, I get it. You work with the yarn that you like to work with. And I'm like, yeah, it's not because I'm necessarily a yarn snob, but I just really enjoy working with it. And uh, plus I really like supporting small businesses. So that's kind of what you get, right? But these relationships have already built. I mean, any question she's like, listen, or I walked in and the fourth one that we went to, um, new year's Eve, I had called and spoke to the owner on Wednesday and I, I didn't know she, well, I mean, I didn't know I was calling the owner. She answered the phone, happened to be the owner. And I told her who I was. I explained what I was trying to do. Would she be willing to let me come into the store? And she's like, oh, my gosh, the store is a mess. I'm running a sale. She's like, I, I'm fine with it, but just don't, you know, try to keep the sale stuff out. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to record any of the sale stuff, but um, which was tricky because I, I had to kind of maneuver the camera a bit to be able to avoid it. And I think I caught one little section because I didn't realize it was there. But anyway, um, so I walked in and she wasn't going to be there New Year's Eve. And so she's like, I'll tell my people that you're going to come and, you know, do your thing. And I was like, okay, cool. So I walked in and I introduced myself. I, I don't even know that I said my name I, or I think I said, Hey, 
hi, my name is Natalie. And she's like, yep, Nancy told oh, crap. I think it was Nancy. I'm so bad with names. She's like, Nancy told me all about you, you know, just in da, 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 and whatever. And I was like, wow. I mean, I felt like I was like a journalist or something, you know, and I'm like, this is kind of cool, but it's been a lot of fun. And I've, I've, built a rapport with these people. And the second tour that I went on, um, that's going to be this Monday, I was asking her, I'm like, you know, I would really like, you know, do you know, do you know if they would ever, she's not, she wasn't the owner. She was the sister. She was the manager. And I'm like, do you know if they would ever donate any kind of yarns for giveaways and stuff? She's like, Oh yeah. She's like, you know, after you do your video, go ahead and send a link, remind them who you are and, you know, ask them about it. And I was like, okay, cool. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, I, wait, oh, my comments are not working. Be right back. I will reboot. I'm not seeing anybody's comments. Oh, that sucks. Um, but, well, I mean, hurry up. <laughs> hurry back, I mean. <laughs> um, hey, Ryan, welcome. Happy New Year to you, too. Oh, yeah, if HD shows up, I want to mention, hey, Anita, welcome. Hi, popping in for a bit at work. Okay, I'm sorry you're at work, but I'm glad you're here to pop in for a bit. Um, if HD comes in, I needed, I wanted to mention that I got, um, uh, I sent out the subscriber of the week card, but it got returned to me. Now I know I've sent out another, I swear I've sent out another card that, and that hasn't been returned to me, but it says the insufficient address or something. So I need to confirm the address uh, so that I can make sure so that I can resend it out. But I felt really bad about it, but I saw it in my PO box and I was like, Oh man. And, and does anybody know Regina Reed? I've had her in my book for some, for a long time. Um, I sent her a Christmas card and hers was sent back to me saying unable to, unable to, I, I don't know, it said something, but um, it got sent back to me. So if it's not her address anymore, I want to go ahead and remove it from my address book. Um, and if I got it wrong, I want to be able to fix it. But, but I don't have any other, I haven't seen Regina comment in a while, I don't think. And I have no other way of being able to contact her. So I don't know if anybody has seen her or not. Hey, Chef in YOH. Hi, Chef. Happy New Year to you, too. Anyway, so my New Year's resolutions were that I'm going to comment reply to comments. I'm, I'm working on it. I've started already and I'm going to finish the ones from the last two videos, excuse me, and to continue bringing new stuff, which I mean, right now for the next one to three months, I'll have something relatively new. And then, um, I already can't remember the rest of it. Oh, shipping out stuff on time. Yeah. That's going to be another thing. Um, Hello, yarn overhook. That happened with my Christmas cards. They got returned. One stamp wasn't enough postage. Everyone's cards were late. Oh, yeah, I know, but everybody understands. And um, I opened yours yesterday, right? Not yesterday. Not yesterday. What would have been Friday's video, which was on Sunday. Oh, staying consistent. Now is my other New Year's resolution for my channel. Um, she's on Instagram. Oh, okay, she is. I will have to find her and... See if I can reach out. I'm back. I think I'm fixed. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back, Leanne. Um, all right. So please remind me. I need to remember to get on Instagram and reach out to Regina. Um, but uh, hi, Natalie, watching ads. Okay. Thank you, Adele. I appreciate it. Um, so anyway, crap, I was going to say something, and I totally... It's gone. Okay, so do you want to look at the yarns again from Stash, or do you want to play a game? I had the name of the game in the title of the video when I first posted the video, but then the thumbnail got all messed up, and I couldn't get, I couldn't change it. I couldn't. It got like stuck. So I went ahead and I deleted that one, and I. I uploaded a new live and um, I took the name of the game away. Although I don't know, maybe it would have attracted more people, but tonight I'm planning on playing family feud. I have fun with that game. I don't know if you guys have fun with that game. I also have friends or we can do the game that we did Christmas Eve, Christmas day. 
Um, but hi Adele, hi Leanne. Hi Adele, hi Red. Wanted to go to Stash. <laughs> okay. Um, hi Don. Hey, wait, did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Hi Don. Didn't have a chance to finish watching the field trip video yet. Okay, no problem, Anita. Um, welcome back, Leanne. Play a game, please. Hey Janice, welcome. Did I say hi? I don't know. I think I missed you. Okay, so well, hi Merit and see you sneak in. Um, well, since we got stash first we'll just do the yarn quickly then we'll play a game i promise i love games so i'm all about all the games hello down on adele don maria yeah okay so everybody's saying hello all right so anyway really quick hi janice all right so this yarn okay no we're going to do these three first uh-oh where'd it go I absolutely love these baroque homes. now one of the things i do like about stash is he does support local dyers um, he supports local dyers, but also has a nice ar ar array of larger, um, brands, larger, yeah, brands. Personally, I'm not that much into Malabrigo. No, no. Um, I'm not that much into Malabrigo. I don't dislike Malabrigo. They have great yarns. Absolutely. 100%. But it's just not necessarily my thing. I don't know why, but, um, uh, but these three, I absolutely love these. I don't know if you could really see, you see, almost look like, like, I don't know how to explain it. It, it, it it's, there are no plies. Um, it's almost like a cord if you, if you can map, but it's not, I don't know if it's focusing enough. Um, but I love working with it. It's like silk. I can't remember who won these in the giveaway when I had, I think I had this one. I don't remember what other color, but it's, they're silky soft, not necessarily squishy soft, but silky soft. And um, I have a dumb question. What is Malabrigo? Is it a name brand or a type of yarn? It's a name brand. So like this is Barocco. Um, and then it's Mykonos by Barocco. Malabrigo is the brand, and then they have the different um, um, types within the brand. I don't know, um, but Mal everybody, I'm gonna any local yarn shop that I've been at, at least in Florida, has had Malabrigo. Now, when I was in Chicago. Nina's, I don't remember having Malabrigo. I don't, they didn't have um, um, Barocco either. They had, they had other, uh, like, non-regular ones that you see everywhere. Mosaic had Barocco. They had Noro. They had, I'm sorry, they had Malabrigo, Barocco, um, Noro. Um, I'm like drawing blanks right now, but they had all, all of those. So for the most part, any local yarn shop outside of Nina's in Chicago had has carried Malabrigo. Some have a larger um, selection than others. Uh, Stash in both – well, St. P. location seemed to have more than I think the Tampa location. And um, field trip number two – they didn't have a ridiculous amount, but they did have a good amount of Malabrigo. And again, it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's just never been my thing. They have beautiful yarns, very soft and, and you know, and, and colorful and whatever. But I've never been drawn to it for whatever reason. Um, hi, Leanne. It looks a little cordy. Yeah, I, it, it does look cordy. Mm -hmm. um, hi to everyone I may have mm -hmm. missed. Hi, Adele. And hi, mm -hmm. Natalie. And no, you didn't miss me. I snuck it. Okay, no problem. I'm glad I didn't miss you. Um, but I love working with this. And I was thinking that these colors would go together. Like, I was thinking I would do, like, this hank and then this hank and then this hank in something. I'm not really sure what because there's only a 100 and... 42 yards in each at 66 linen, 26 nylon, 8% cotton. Um, but I will say, I'm trying to remember if, I think it's right on par with what 
my local yarn shop was, um, but he had these on clearance and I have a feeling that a lot of the, I, other than creativity and the stash in St. Pete, I haven't seen these in any local yarn shops in the last couple of years. Um, so I'm guessing they may be on their way out. I don't know, but I love these love, love, love them. Um, actually a little, I was a little sad parting with the ones I had, but I wanted to share them. So I did. <laughs> um, I should have my hand on Judy at camera. Okay, you're saying hello. But then this one, um, I love this one. Now, I love the one that the shawl was made in. When I first walked in and I showed you the shawl, they used black with it. Um, I absolutely love this one, though. And it was funny for three two or three colors, uh, two colors. And I sent a picture to Catherine and I was like, help, I need your, I need your help um, on uh, which one, but it's unique. It's fingering hand dyed. I do like that they, um, for every Hank that's sold, they, they plant a tree in Africa. I think that's kind of cool. Now there's 435 yards. So, I mean, I'm going to have to be figuring out one Hank um, project. Of course, if I actually knitted with it, I would have the I would have so many more options uh, than with crocheting. But um, I'll figure something out. But this one I absolutely love. Now, to me, it's not coming out true to color. I don't think anywhere. Hmm. It's losing it. Like the the electric purple that I was telling you guys about. I mean, it runs out, runs throughout, but to me, this looks blue on here, but it's actually like a, like an electric or, or Royal purple. It's like the most stunning purple. I mean, it's insane, but this one I thought was just so beautiful and it's, it is, it, the fiber, like the strands themselves are soft, not like butter, but soft but it's squishy too so beautiful i mean so beautiful i i so can't wait to make something with this um oh that's gorgeous yeah isn't this awesome i love this one i just wish the purple was coming out the way it is because i mean it is where is the big there was like a big section of it i thought i guess that right there there is the biggest but it's so not coming out on my end i'm trying to do it against the white background but it's still not making a difference it's just so beautiful oh i forgot to put that bag away that's that's all messy plus that's the top of a metal tree <laughs> um but love this one and again it's a great um it's a there's a there's a great they do great things. <laughs> oh, you buy a Hank, they plant a tree. I think that's great. Um, oh, very nice. Yep. Yeah, it looks blue, doesn't it? I, I hate it. it. Not I hate it, but I mean, I, I hate that that's how it's coming out versus the way it actually looks. Because I would love for you to actually, I think when I showed it on the video yesterday, it, it showed pretty true to color. Um, it's just that that color is just so amazing. Uh, that looks like it would be a dream to work with. Oh, yeah, totally. That is gorgeous. The possibilities are endless with that. I know, right? Still scared to use fancy yarn. Please don't be scared to use fancy yarn. Seriously, I know a lot of people. I know. And that's the thing. I was I was trying to explain it to some of these shop owners. I said, I, I have a small channel. Um, I have some viewers that to totally, you know, that would what have shopped on my small business links that I've introduced them to that love the yarns. I have some that um, would buy them or would use them if they knew a little bit more about them. Like if they had a more of a comfort level in them, then I have some that love the idea of it and, or even have some, but just don't use it because it's the fancy yarn and they want to save it because they love it, which I totally get. You see how much I have. 
Uh, but it's not because I don't want to use it. It's just I have a lot of it. Um, and then I have a lot of um, subscribers that don't have the need for, you know, they, they don't, it's not something they would be able to sell if they made something out of it. And so, I mean, it's hard to justify getting this kind of yarn if you aren't going to, I mean, if you're, if you are gifting it and you don't, you are, you have superfluous funds to be able to, you know, buy this type of yarn to simply give away all the time. That's awesome. Um, but if you're not, if, if you, your intent would be to sell it, but you don't have a market for it, then there would be no reason to really focus on that type of yarn. And I totally get that. And they get it too. And I'm like, plus I'm like, most of the people I, I, most of my friends are crocheters, not knitters. And crocheters also have a hard time using this type of yarn because you use so much more than you would with knitting. And it's hard to really justify that. And I told them, you know, I'll walk into creativity and she'll be like, oh, what, what are you making now? And I'll be like, well, I'm, I'm planning on a, um, a shawl. How, how, what do you, how much do you need? Well, I need about 900 yards. She her 900, 1,000 yards, whatever the case is. And her draw, jaw literally drops each time. She's like, oh, I forgot you're a crocheter. And she's like, you seriously need to start knitting so that you can, you know, not use as much yarn. And I'm like, I get it, but I like using this yarn and I crochet. <laughs> so it is what it is. Plus, I have, I've established a market where I can, for the most part, it's getting a little harder right now, I've noticed, but... Um, you know, it just all depends and, you know, and they all understand all the shop owners that I've spoken to understand. And they're like, yeah, it could be hard, especially being crocheters, but we, they just appreciate getting their name out there. And especially right now, because times are very tough for small businesses. Um, that looks like it would be dream work with still. Okay. You could pick up a one color hank to go with it for a bigger project. Just the thought. Yes, I could. Um, I would want to pick up, though, a similar yarn. They do have solids, actually, in this line. Um, so that's actually a good idea. Though I did break down and sub to knit crate and use some of that yarn, fanciest yarn I've used. Oh, you, that's so sweet. But that's awesome. That really is awesome. I have a bunch of um, knit crate yarn. I have not used any knit crate yarn, though, myself. Um, actually, I started one project, but I never finished it. I, I just, I kind of lost interest. It just kind of lost, I don't know, something. Uh, once you do, you will call, f fall in love with the yarn overhook. What the, the, this type of yarn land, is that what you're saying? I totally agree with you 100%. Plus not enough yardage for the price. There is, if you knit, if you knit, you can very easily make several things and not, several things out of one hank but you can make a, a, a variety of items if you knit with it versus crochet hey kelly welcome how are you hey natalie miley and everyone hello my friend uh sh my supply is a tad overdone too my 2021 goals is to use at least half of my hand dyed yarn stash oh my god i'd be yeah that that would be awesome and to sell it because I seriously need to up my business like big time because I only have less than a year until I'm not working. Uh, yeah, I guess it's just that I don't make much in wearables outside of hats and mitts, not using fancy stuff on them. Oh, yeah. And bags and such. Maybe if I wore more crochet, the crochet items. Oh, yeah, totally. I, I can see doing it, it with bags, but I would be using the fancier cottons. Um, oh, my gosh. Oh. At one of them, there was this beautiful, con I think it was 100% cotton, and it was so insanely soft, and I couldn't believe it was cotton. And it, it was a chunky weight, I think. It was a beautiful hank and a hot pink. Oh, it was gorgeous. But I couldn't, I couldn't justify getting one hank in it because I wouldn't be able to make anything because it was a chunky weight, which really cuts down on the yardage. Um but Leanne, I am with you on using up more of my indie yarns. Yeah, I guess it's, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, and if you don't make wearables like shawls and stuff, I my business is baby blankets and adult Afghans. But 
that's what my business started out as. But that's why I went with Natalie's closet because I anything I learned how to make, I could add to my closet because you put anything in your closet, right? So then I started getting into shawls. And then as I got more into indie yarns, I started primarily doing shawls and scarves and fewer blankets. Although I love using my indie yarns for blankets, except I just need a lot more of it. And that's why I haven't been doing that. But like my crocodile stitch blanket, which was the very first project I ever did is a beautiful, um, uh, 75, uh, super wash 25 nylon, I think, or 89, 80, 20, uh, which was gorgeous, but it took four hangs. It was $120 in materials alone for this blanket, but it was something that was custom ordered and then fell through, whatever. I'm not getting into that. Then my Lotus flower blanket, I made out of a, um, Shipius, uh, uh, whirl and loved that. That was awesome. I actually have them right there. I could show them to you in a second. I was looking at them as I was talking about them, but I totally get what you're saying, Anita. It, it, you, if you made more wearables, it would make more sense. Absolutely. Um, I done. I agree. I made a hat with the light purple sparkly December knit crate yarn with a gray palm. Love the pattern by two brothers blanket. Oh, cool. Yeah. And uh, that's another thing. I love, I love the idea of making hats out of my indie yarns. Now I'm going to say 97%. I'm going to say 99% of my indie yarns are fingering weight. I may have a couple of hanks of DK, uh, from Shandy at Expression Fiber Arts, and I may have a couple from Long Dog Yarn. I think, and I may have a couple from Knit Crate that were worsted, but otherwise, it's all fingering. And that's the only other thing is the pre the the projects take longer also because you're using a much thinner yarn, but I don't have a problem making hats out of it, except they're not necessarily going to be like the super, um, um, the super, what was I going to say when making hats that are for warmth, uh, using fingering weight isn't necessarily going to get you there. Even though it's wool, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily going to get you there like with a worsted or a chunky weight. So that is something I have to really think about because I really want to start making more hats. Um, my husband got me in the habit of mixing my fancy on with a nicer acrylic when I'm crocheting. So that way I have more for bigger projects. Plus, I buy some of my fancy yarn at thrift stores. Yeah, that's also a great place to find fancier yarns, too. Um, I just don't enjoy working with acrylic as much. I mean, like, the project we're not going to speak about right now is acrylic. Um, but it depends on the acrylic. Crap, and I forgot a couple weeks ago I was supposed to respond, and I forget whose video I was supposed to re reply to that I said I had, um, was it unforget the unforgettable version of or the uh, the uk version mm. of unfor was it unforgettable mm. crap i can't remember but um depending on the acrylic i'll be okay working with it i don't often mix it with my wools though because they're completely different washing instructions um and typically when i work with acrylic i work with worsted weight and all my indie yarns are nine like i said 99 percent are fingering weight but that is a smart thing to do janice and i love the idea that you you get the fancy yarn from thrift stores because you can really find great deals that or estate sales um although then you want to be careful because you don't know how they were stored or anything like that but those are great great places to find and you can find um like vintage yarns too that are really hard to find and beautiful to work with. Uh, chop my hair all off though. So I might have to start using scarves now. You're so funny, Anita. My neck gets cold now. Ugh, I have to cut it so that I do get like, because my hair used to be down to my butt or down to my shoulders at the very least. Now I love it being short because it opens up and cools me off a bit. Hi everyone. Hi Natalie. Hey Wanda. Welcome. How are you? Ouch. Um, I too started my fancy. I too started my fancier yarn journey 
with Nick Crate. I think it's a wonderful way to have beautiful yarns in your stash. I love receiving my box each month. Then I went to local knee dyers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's not how I necessarily – it is it is how I got, like, really into it. But, um, yeah, it absolutely introduces you to those types of yarns um, and a great way to do it for a reasonable price for what you get. Held two strands of DK together with knit crate. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, oh, Leanne, is knit crate going to lead me down a rabbit hole? Probably. And uh, stop it. You have been misbehaving. You have been misbehaving. I mentioned on the video we did for our other channel that's going to post tomorrow. She went and grabbed a chocolate piece of um, wrapped chocolate that was on the coffee table. It was open because my mom had tried it and wanted me to try it. And she grabbed it and almost swallowed the packaging and everything when I caught her. And then when we were vi recording the video, she was trying to get to any chocolate that was on the coffee table. Stop, Miley. No. No. She's been acting very strange today, doing really non-typical things for her, like way off things for her. Come here. It will. Oh, Miley, you pushed up against my fingers. That must have scrunched your eyeball. Are you okay? Don't do that. That could have hurt you. Is your eyeball okay? Okay, little face. And we'll always have acrylic in my stash. It's a must with big blankets and my grandchildren, toys, beanies, etc. Chat. Yeah, I don't have enough acrylic. I have some acrylics in these bins, but not enough of it. I really do need to get some more. Um, but the acrylics I like are the really silky ones, which don't always do well with certain projects. But I don't like rough acrylics. Uh, I received my card today. My husband brought it to me at the hospital yesterday. Thank you very much. Oh, you're so welcome, Wanda. Are you okay? I didn't realize you were in the hospital. I'm glad you got your card, though. Uh, possible yarn over. <laughs> uh, yep, my hair was down to my butt. Got it chopped chin length all at once. Huge pile of hair on the floor. Oh, awesome. Yeah, when I did mine, it was down to my butt, and we put it, they put it into a ponytail, wrapped or tied it, and then and cut it right off. I still have the ponytail somewhere. I have no idea where, though. Um, but I, it's awesome doing that. <laughs> Say woof to Miley for me. Woof to Miley. Behave yourself. Um, LOL, I received it yesterday. LOL, I got out of hospital today. I, I hope you're okay. I use mostly acrylic and cotton. Yeah, I like acrylic cotton blends. Um, but again, depends on how they feel. I'm really picky when it comes to yarn. Okay, let me show you this last one. And then I'm going to give put her sheet on her bed and give her a B-O-N-E while we play games. I'm listening, just crocheting a hat. No problem, Kelly. Uh, a bunch of people are just sitting back um, lurking. If you guys haven't hit the thumbs up button yet, if you would do so, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, so now this one is absolutely amazingly squishy and buttery soft. Uh-oh, it's coming out of the hank. Um, I think it's coming out more true to color in this one than it did on my video yesterday. Yesterday it was coming out like hot, hot pink. It is a hot pink, but it's almost, it's not more fuchsia. Fuchsia is in the right color. Stop. No. Now you're for sure not getting any extra treats. It's not happening. Um, it's not, I can't say it's fuchsia, but it's not like a hot pink. It is, but not. There's like more, I'm trying to figure out what it is, but you Okay. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful, soft, I mean, it's squishy and I mean, it's literally like butter. Oh, it's beautiful. And this one is Mad Tosh, hand-dyed yarns, lay is the colorway. And this is a super, 100% superwash merino wool. Now see, the, some 100% superwash merino wools are not quite as buttery soft and squishy. Um, it, it does depend on the process that was done to make it a superwash as well as oh so many different reasons um but there's 420 yards in this one and it is machine wash cold uh lay flat to dry
But I, I like, the, I mean, it's hand dyed in Texas um, from wool ethically sourced in South Africa. Uh, let's see. Wait, wait, wait. What? Um, I'm getting better, but have to rest a lot. Good night. Just wanted to say hi. Hi, Wanda. Well, I hope you feel better. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm glad you got your card. I'm glad you're out of the hospital. Please rest up and get better. I got to go back to work but back later if I can sneak away by everyone. Okay. Thank you so much for stopping by though, Anita. I really do appreciate it. Behave yourself and go back to work. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Be naughty and stay with us. Uh, but no, seriously, thank you for stopping by. And Wanda, sweet dreams to you. Wanda, hope you feel better. Prayers. Okay. You're coming to the kitchen with me for a bit. I'm putting on a homemade Chinese chicken noodle soup. It's a few steps so I want to get the first one started. <laughs> okay, no problem. I'm, I'm happy to go along with you. Um, bye, Erin Overhook. God bless. Hey, Amy, welcome. How are you? Miley's just telling you she liked the color. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you, everyone. Hugs. Hugs back to you, Wanda. But anyway, absolutely love this one. I cannot wait to work with it. It's so soft. So, so soft. Um, and I love the wool washes that he... Um, that he threw in. And I really can't believe that I didn't put the, I waited until after the tour to give you, uh, give you the opportunity to do a screenshot of the business card. But, um, it works. So why did I think he had a different way to anyway? Okay. But the washes, I'm actually looking forward to using the pineapple one. Well, the fig one sounds cool, too. But um, that's the fig one. And then the scentless. And this one's the lacy. But the pineapple grove, sweet on the inside, is what it says. There's two of those. I thought those were just really cool, and I'm looking forward to using them. But uh, sorry for the earthquake if I move the computer too much. Um, praying for you, Wanda, sweetie. Take care. God bless. Hi, Crooked A. I'm still here. Hi, Amy. Oh, okay. Cool, Cameron. Um, all right. Let me put the sheet on her bed. I'll give, go get her a B-O-N-E, and then you guys want to uh, play Family Feud or Friends. I pulled out Family Feud. It's just cards. And I would give you the um, topic or the, you know, the thing. And then you'd have to, you'd have to um, shout out the top like five or six or whatever answers. Um, we're not doing like, unfortunately, there's not going to be like a giveaway. I would love to be able to keep track and actually give something away right now. It's that's not a feasible thing. Maybe at some point I'll do that though. Family feud. Okay. Family feud. It is. Uh, where did I put the sheet? Okay. Ouchie. Ouchie. Hold on a second. Let me put the sheet on there. Oh, this is all. Crooked. Hey, and upside down and everything and so not the way it's supposed to be. Oh man, you dirty little dog. Dirty, dirty dog. You dirty, dirty little dog. You're not, but it's fun to say it. Um, okay. Sometimes upset her, upsets her stomach. Yeah, I know you know what you're getting. Say bye, peeps. I'll be back. Okay, let me just wash my hands really quick. Oh, <sighs> 
I wish I had some kind of a candy or a mint or something. Okay, family feud. Hello, Adele. Praying for you on to get well. Um, I did say hi to you, Amy, right? Because I know I read your comment about Miley earlier. Okay. So, on to Family Feud. Um, what? I'm so confused. You know, sometimes people really confuse me with what they say. Um, or, like, something that is said is misinterpreted. And then <laughs> I got a notification for my own live. How often does that happen? Not often at all. All right. Let's play. Oh, I forget how they say it. Let's. I forget how it goes with the actual game, like on TV. Okay, so Family Food it is. Now let's see what this says. Oh. All right, well, we're not going to play this way. But look, they have... I thought the X's used to be red. Oh, they have red ones and they have blue ones. I haven't read the actual instructions for this, but we're not playing it the way that the actual instructions say it. All I'm going to do, I'm going to read off the topic or the, whatchamacallit, and then you guys answer the top, like, two, four... Wait, two, four, six, seven. This one has seven. Some have five. Okay, are you guys ready? <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to do that one first. Oh, these are good. Okay, so where everybody go? Nobody's talking. You guys are going to have to actually talk if you're going to take part in the game. You guys can still lurk and not take part if you don't want to, or if you want to just throw up your answer, you're welcome to do that. Again, I'm not, this isn't for like um, a giveaway or anything. It's just to have a little bit of fun. Okay, Don. <laughs> oh, the, like, you know, the heel, like, like you have the heel of your foot and then when you go into the arch, like right past the heel, but before you get into the arch is like, itching like crazy it's driving me up a wall waiting for you to ask okay Adele Natalie I'm so sorry but I'm going to have to pass on the game I'm going to have to go back or go to bed I haven't been sleeping very well and I can hardly hold my eyes open everyone have a blessed remainder oh Don I'm so sorry but I'm glad you stopped by and I totally get it I haven't been sleeping well either um I actually fell asleep right before I came on to the live and almost overslept but i hope you feel better i hope you get a good night's sleep god bless you too love hugs and prayers to you my dear friend thank you so much for stopping by i am here waiting on you okay um wait what blessed remainder of the week love to all yes um same to you love you too my friend sorry chopping i will yell my answer <laughs> okay leanne um <laughs> you win you're so funny all right so the first one, we asked 100 women, what would you do if two men were fighting over you? There are two, four, six answers. Let's see who gets the, uh, who gets the top answer. So we asked 100 women, what would you do if two men were fighting over you? <laughs> Laugh, watch. Okay. Actually, it's the it's number two, four, wait, two, four, six. It's number six with one point, but laugh at them is on there. Um, <laughs> watch faint. Well, the faint could be place a bet, <laughs> grab some popcorn. <laughs> 
Okay, I guess um, faint could be be amazed. I mean, you're so amazed you faint, I suppose. That's number four with three points. Um, shake my head, walk away. Walk away is number one. Leave them or walk with 46 points. Way to go, Angela. Um, shake my head. Yeah. Um, place a bet. That is too funny. Toss in some weapons. <laughs> Toss in some weapons. All right. So leave them or walk is number one with 46 points. Try to stop them is 21 points. Enjoy the fight is eight points. Be amazed, which I think faint works for that is three points. Get upset is two points. And then laugh at them is one point. <laughs> Tossing some weapons. Don, you are too funny. All right, so next one. Um, wait a minute. Hold on a second. All right. Next one is name a reason a man might decide to get rid of his toupee. Two, four, six. So there are seven answers. So name a reason a man might decide to get rid of his toupee. <laughs> Did I mention I don't play seriously? <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine with me. Um, it falls off. Falls off is two, four, six. Number six with eight points. Outdated. Um, outdated, older, grungy. That's number five with 10 points. Doesn't fit. Nope, that one's not on there. Lost his glue. <laughs> Lost his glue stick. Um, it smells like a wet dog. Nope, that's not on there. Um, woman likes him without... It doesn't have anything specifically about some uh, like a wife liking it, but confident, secure is number three with eleven points. His wife throws it in the muddy well. <laughs> all right, so number one answer is bald is cool. You all are too funny. Um, bald is cool with fourteen points. Got a new one is number two with twelve points. Confident, secure is number three with eleven points. Hair grew back, 10 points. Old, grungy, 10 points. Uh, blows or falls off, 8 points. And then looks silly or fake, 8 points. I don't know that I've ever seen a truly, truly, truly great looking toupee. I, I really don't think so. Uh, but you know, it has headlights. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne, you guys are so funny. I love I love seeing your answers. All right, next one. Name a phrase that starts with carry the and then go on. There's two, four, six, seven answers. So name a phrase that starts with carry the. That's hilarious, Leanne. <laughs> Ouch. Nope, not show. Load load is number one. Way to go, Kelly, with 24 points. Carry the torch. Torch is number seven with six points. Carry the bucket. Not a bucket, but there's a bag, for, which is number two with 18 points. Carry the money. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Yarn, I love it, Don. Good, Leanne, you guys thought the same. Carry the cross. No, believe it or not. <laughs> Crochet projects. I love it all. I love those. Those are awesome. Okay, so the answers are load was number one with 24 points. Bags is 18 points. Carry the burden, yeah. 
The Weight, that's number three with eight points. Baby with six points. Ball with six points. Groceries with six points. And Torch with six points. This is the Platinum Edition, by the way, guys. So we're styling here. All right. <laughs> okay, we're going to do this one first. Okay. Um, next one. Name one simple rule a father might have for dating his daughter. And there are five answers. So name one simple rule a father might have for dating his daughter. Only the best for Team Natalie. <laughs> You're so funny. Okay, no rules. Bring her home on time. Job. Home on time, number one with 50 points. Have a job is number five with two points. Um, rule number one, don't keep it in, don't keep it in your pants. <laughs> Hands to yourself is number two with 32 points. Don't be late. Well, yeah, home on time is number one. I have no problem going back to prison. <laughs> no alcohol drinking on date. Not that. No, not that specifically. Needs a needs a car. No, we've got home on time, which we've already said. Um. Uh, home on time with 50 points. Hands to yourself with 32 points. Treat with respect with 16 points. No background, eight points. And have a job, two points. And my dad would be like, um, one of the rules is you got to come here while I'm cleaning my shotgun on the table. Uh, don't, as in don't date his daughter. Oh, <laughs> got it. Uh, sorry, did I do that, Jenna? Sorry if I did. I, it doesn't tell me who retracted. It just says the message, message was retracted. Um, okay. So next one. Are you guys having fun with this? I hope it sounds like it anyway. I'm having fun with it. All right. So name something people care more about after they turn 30. So name something people care more about after they turn 30. And there are eight answers. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys are having fun with it. Yes, ma'am. Whatever. I don't know. I kind of cared about all this even before 30. But what do I know? Money is number four with six points. Uh, yarn, yarn is not on here. Health is number two with 16 points. Wrinkles, their appearance is number one with 44 points. Money, we already did. Downtime, nope, not specifically. Uh, weight, their health is number two with 16 points. Um, massages, yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, job, that would go, yeah, their career, number seven with four points. Um, wrinkles, yeah, appearance is number one. Loss of hair, appearance, skin care, maybe, family. Uh, family is number three with 10 points. So we've got their appearance is number one with 44 points. Um, their health is number two with 16. Children, family is uh, 10 points. Money, finances is six points. Life is four points. Significant other is four points. Their career, job, four points. And their age, four points. That was cool. That was fun. All right. So name a famous David. And there are six answers. Okay, so name a famous David retirement fund. That should be something. 
Famous Davids. There's six answers. She's almost done with it. I hope she ends up falling asleep. Um, retirement. King David. Yep, number one with 40 points. Way to go, Kelly. David Bowie is not on here. David Spade is not on here. Cassidy is not on here. Brinkley, nope. David Bowie, nope. I already, nope. David in the Bible. David and Goliath. Yeah, that was actually number one. King and Goliath was number one at 40 points. Uh, way to go, Granny D, David and Goliath. Um, Letterman is number two with 11 points. Uh, Purdue is not. David and Goliath. David Beckham, nope. Come on, guys. You guys only got the first two. King and Goliath and David Letterman. Four more. I would tend to think you should know at least two of these last um, four. Chappelle, yep, that was number six with six points. Hasselhoff, yep, Hasselhoff is number five with six points. Um, Kempsey, nope. Chappelle, yep, I already said that one. Dutch, oh, I don't know how to pronounce it, nope. He's my neighbor. LOL, you know him, right? Who? Who's your neighbor? Copperfield is number three with seven. So you guys got all but one, right? Because you guys got Chappelle. Yeah. So all but one. Starts with an N. Schwimmer? <laughs> yeah, but no, he's not on there. So the one you guys have missed starts with an N as in Nancy. David Kempsey, nope. Yep, Niven. Niven, yep. So Granny D got it first. That's okay, Crystal. Welcome. I'm happy to have you here. We're playing um, Family Feud. All right, so we got them all. King and Goliath is 40. David Letterman, 11. David, Co David Copperfield is 7. David Niven with 6. David Hasselhoff with 6. And David Chappelle with 6. Okay, now I'm gone for sure. <laughs> okay, Donna, get some sleep, my friend. I love you that you stayed, but please go get some sleep. All right, Crystal D, I thought of it right when you did. <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, hi, Leanne. Okay, Donna, night, night. Yes, yeah, sweet dreams, my friend. All right. <laughs> okay, I like this one. All right, name a question people ask their dogs. There's four answers. Name a question people ask their dogs. <laughs> I ask these all the time. Everybody thinking, you okay? I guess, kind of, maybe, kind of, sort of. Um, how are you is number three with nine points. You want to go outside? Yep, that's number two with 24. You got to go outside. Yeah, I want to go out. Um, T-R-E-A-T is number one. Eat or treat with 37 points. Need to go outside. Um, you hungry? Hungry? Out? Want to go bye bye <laughs> outside? What do you want? Ashy moo moo. Aww. Why are constantly here? I need to potty. <laughs> it's want to eat or treat with thirty seven points. Want to go out with twenty four points? How are you with nine points? And what do you want with five points? That is true. Why are you constantly here? That's so funny, Karen. Okay, that, I like that one. That was fun. Oh, these are these are kind of funny. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do this one first. Um, why are you barking? Yeah, totally. 
Um, okay, so next one. We asked 100 men, name a famous woman you'd never want to pop out of your birthday cake. There are five answers. So we asked 100 men, name a famous woman you'd never want to pop out of your birthday cake. Five answers. <laughs> I want to see who gets the first one right. I mean, who answers the first one? Medea, nope. Betty White, nope. I mean, all famous. Um, the Queen, nope. Roseanne is number four with four points. Mother, nope, that's not on there. Tammy, <laughs> no, the queen outside Walters, uh, nope, mother is Zena, nope, oh, come on, outside of Roseanne Barr, nobody got any other ones right, Barbara Walters, nope, I know I read it like 12 times, the answer, I still have to keep looking at it, <laughs> Whoopi, nope, wait, nope, one I think had a two had a talk two had a talk show I think the other one I think the first one did um one well if I say what her position was you guys would know it instantly one is a singer two had talk shows and one, I can't give you a uh, clue that wouldn't give it away. Ellen, nope. Rosie is number one. Rosie O'Donnell, number one with 29 points. Way to go, Mare. Oprah is number five with three points. Nancy Grace, nope. Martha Stewart, nope. Rosie O'Donnell, yep, number one. Um, Mare got that right. Nope, Ellen is not on here. So you guys got... Three, yeah, you guys got three. Rosie, uh, Roseanne Barr, Oprah Winfrey. It's kind of mean. What is Big Butt Kim Kardashian? <laughs> nope, not Kim Kardashian. None of the Kardashians are on here. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you guys the answer. Rosie O'Donnell was number one with 29. Hillary Clinton was number two with 19. Britney Spears was three with 12. Roseanne Barr was four with four points. And Oprah Winfrey was five with three points. Um, Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah, a singer I can't imagine. Yeah, that was Britney Spears. Um, okay. Okay. Name the first thing you ask when you buy a used car. So name the first thing you ask when you buy a used car. And there are eight answers. <laughs> oh, my Brittany is on there. Yep. Never thought of Hillary should have. Yep. Mileage is number one with 51 points. Way to go, Mayor. Does doesn't run. this has how does it run? But yeah, number four with five points. Um, how many miles? Yeah, that was number one. Year is not on here. Um, price, yep, number two with 23. How much mileage? Age, no. Um, previous owners, yep, how many owners, that's number six with two points, is this car a lemon, what's wrong with it, is <laughs> number five with four points, has it ever been wrecked, yep, that's number three with six points, title, nope, previous wrecks, yep, Carfax, nope, well, I guess, kind of, was it in any accident? Show me the Carfax. Carfax. Hey, Christy. Hey, Christy. Welcome. How are you? Um, if I missed you before, I'm sorry. 
All right, so number one, mileage with 51 points. How much? Number two, with 23. Ever been in an accident with six? How does it run? Five points. What's wrong with it? Four points. How many owners? Two points. Is it working? Two points. Why are you selling it? Two points. Is this your lowest price? Yeah. Does it have a blue title? A blue title? What's a blue title? Um, okay. That's kind of gross. All right, so next one. <laughs> All right, that'll be. All right, I like these two, but they are going to go after this one. All right, next one is blue title indicates salvage car. Oh, I didn't know that. Good to know. I learned something new. I just popped in. Okay, no problem. Um, all right, so name your favorite Alfred Hitchcock thriller. Name your favorite Alfred Hitchcock thriller, and there are five answers. You got it all over your bed. Really? Wow. Is everybody thinking? Uh, birds is number one with 48. <laughs> birds, birds, the birds. I don't even know if I saw the birds. Be right back getting something to eat. Okay, no problem, Don. Um, honestly, I one of them I I saw years and years and years ago, and I don't remember having seen the whole thing, actually. Um, hey, Kathy, welcome. How are you? Hugs back to you. Thank you for watching the commercials. I appreciate it. Wow, so only the birds? So what? That was the number one answer. Um, I can't. Hi, Mimi. Okay, I'll give you guys a second answer. I want to go grab a Starburst or something. Hold on, I'll be right back. But answer what your favorite um, Hitchcock thriller or whatever it was is. I'm here. I didn't go anywhere. No. I don't have anything non-chewy, so. Whoa. Okay. Hey, Mimi. The Jamaican Inn. Nope. That's not in it or on it. I haven't seen any. I said, like, oh, you did, Granny D? I'm sorry. I missed that. Psycho is number two with 29 points. To Catch a Thief. Nope. All right, so I'll go ahead and um All right, so number 1 was The Birds with 48, Psycho number 2 29, Rear Window with 15, Vertigo with 4 and North by No West is 3. I haven't heard of any of them besides The Birds and Psycho. Psycho, yep. And the birds, the only two I have seen. Yeah, I haven't seen the birds, but um, I've heard of it at least. Amen, Grant, Granny Psycho is awesome. Jeanette Lee sold it. Yeah, I remember seeing part of it, but I don't remember the whole thing or I blocked it out, one or the other. I don't know. But, um, yeah. All right, next one. People are always telling other people to get a good what? People are always telling other people to get a good what. And there are six answers. Yes, yeah, Psycho was great. I need to watch it again. I remember the shower scene. Or I don't know if I remember the shower scene so much as having heard about the shower scene. But um, Meal... Actually, no. That's a good one, though. Doctor. <laughs> no. Sleep is number one with 23. 
Good night, sleep. Job is number two with 21. A good look. Nope. Book, nope. Good sense, sense of humor. Nope. Lawyer, yep. Number three with eight. A good insurance. Uh, nope. So you got the first three right, or the first, the top three. Now there's the last three. Like, what am I doing to these cards? Get a good. I don't know if that's actually the right. Um... <laughs> Bad partner. Love it. A good insurance. Nope. Regiment. Nope. <sighs> Bad part. <laughs> Grip. Yep. <laughs> so you got it. That's number four with six points. Recommendation. Nope. Physical. Nope. Physical. I, mean, <laughs> I, I knew what you meant. Nope. So the last two are deal with six points and education with six points. Oh, yeah. I guess that could have been a squeeze. Sorry. I was trying to grip them. David, oh, David Jansen. I was like, what? But no, I don't think Jansen was on there. All right. So. <laughs> Let me make sure there's nothing. Okay. So name something you find sand in after a day at the beach. Name something you find sand in after a day at the beach. There are seven answers. That's one of the things that used to drive me crazy about the sand is getting it everywhere. Swimsuit is number two with 20 points. A beach bag. Yep, that's number six with three points. Towel is number three with eight points. Places it should not be exactly, Angela. <laughs> Granny D, exactly. Don, yep. Um, flip flop sandals, yet yeah, that's number one with 53 points. Umbrella sandals, sandals is number one. Umbrella, nope. I'm not touching that. <laughs> Car, nope, not on here. You fuck cracked, you did it. <laughs> nope, umbrella's not on here either. Well. Okay, body was on here. So you, a bunch of you guys got, but it just says a hair body. It doesn't go into any kind of specifics on body. Mouth a blanket. Well, towel blanket. Yep, number three with eight points. But I think did somebody else say it and I missed it. Yeah, Crystal said towel earlier. Um, mouth. Believe it or not, no. Well, I guess it's part of the body, so... Okay. Yeah, it does, Leanne. Okay, so shoes, clothes was number one with 53. Swimsuit with 20. Towel blanket with eight. Hair body with six. Shell with three. Beach bag with three. And money coins, three. Yeah, and cooler. It gets everywhere. Okay, name a bird that would make a disgusting meal. Name a bird that would make a disgusting meal. There's seven answers. How yuck is it when you crunch down on a grain of sand or when you see a little one eating it? Oh, I know. Yeah, buzzard is three, number three with 13 points. Vulture is number two with four, 14 points. Yep, Buzzard, you got it. Yeah, these all would make a disgusting meal. Totally. That's it, Buzzard and Vultures. Name a bird that would make a disgusting meal. We got number two and number three. Blackbirds, it doesn't say specifically. Wow, is she thirsty. 
Mm. Raven isn't on here. Crow is number one with 15 points. So we got the top three. Now we got four more. Crow, yep, Crow's number one. You better go to sleep. Go. You better go to sleep. That's all I got to say. No. All right, so Crow was with 15, Vulture 14, Buzzard 13, Pigeon 13. No, Ostrich isn't on here. Seagull 7, Penguin 5. I'm glad I was talking because she just burped so loud. Um, parakeet Parrot, five points. Yeah, Ostrich wouldn't be... Yeah, that would be kind of disgusting, too. Mm. What? All right. Uh, let's see. Little tiny ones like hummingbirds. They are too cute. Yeah, just because that would be. All right. Name a kind of place where you go every Saturday. Name a kind of place where you go every Saturday. There are six answers. We emu in this country. I don't know about that. All right. Pub. A pub would be a bar or club. That's um, number six with three. Grocery store. I guess that would just be part of it. No, well, no, because that. Um, no, not specifically. Food store. No, park is number five with four points. A market or fair. Um, no, bar, yeah, that's a bar club is number six with three points. Mall is number one, store or mall. See, grocery store, I guess, technically, but when I heard store, mall, I figured like a department store or something like that. Uh, that's number one with 52 points. The movies is number four with six points. Shopping. Yeah, store mall, which is 52. That's number one. So we got store mall is number one with 52 points. Home, number two with 14 points. Restaurant with six points. Movie or theater, six points. Park with four points. And bar, club, three points. Visit family, they only have home. Um, fishing, nope. Oh, my God, I text, text my answer to my daughter, flea market. <laughs> <laughs> no flea market on here. Hey, you want me to keep going? You guys tell me. I did that the other day. I messaged something that uh, my mom that was meant for Catherine. And I was like, uh, it was bound to happen at some point. But you guys want me to continue? That. I just like really bent one card. Uh, funny. <laughs> I've done that many times where I end up accidentally texting or messaging somebody else. And I'm like, depending on what it is, that could be dangerous. All right. Um, name someone from the Bible whose, whose name begins with the letter M as in Mary. Name someone from the Bible whose name begins with the letter M as in Mary. Five answers. That's another strike against me. She'd been trying to get me into the cuckoo bin. <laughs> I bet she was like, what? <laughs> no getting. Flea market out of the blue. Moses is number one with 25. Madonna, nope. Miriam, nope. Malachi, yep, is number five with six points. Whoa. I'm going to go falling asleep, but I had fun. Love you, Nat. No. Okay, Granny D, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm glad you had fun. Sweet dreams, my friend. And thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. Love, hugs, and prayers to you. 
Mary Magdalene. Well, Mary is on here. Well, so I guess it just says Mary, which is number four with nine points. Uh, good night, D, sweet dreams. Yes, absolutely sweet dreams. I'm surprised you guys didn't get number two or number three. I mean, you got number one and number five. Moses is number one. Um, okay, I can answer them. Or do you guys want another? Uh-oh. No, Michael is not in here. Mark is number three with 16 points. So you guys got Moses, Mark, and Malachi. Well, and Mary, I guess, technically. Um, yep, Matthew, Mayor, that good one, number two with 18 points. All right, name a food that you hope you got milk to go with it. So name a food that you hope you got milk to go with it. There are seven answers. I would with all but one, except it would be an ingredient in that one. So... Who? Matthew, nope. Cereal, yeah, number one with 60 points. Cake, yep, is number five with two points. Oreos, is, cookies is number two with 21 points. Oatmeal is not on here specifically. Cookies, yeah, I said cookies with number two. Cereal is number one. Coffee is not on here. A Kahlua. <laughs> Kahlua is not on here. So you guys got cereal and cookies and cake. More things. I put Oreo with cookies, which is number two with 21 points. Uh, cornbread, nope. Tea, nope. Which you would think that they would put that on here because there are a lot of people that drink milk with or tea with milk. Coffee, coffee, coffee. How crazy is that? They don't have coffee on here. Maybe it's because they consider it half and half instead of milk. I don't know, but nope. Teas then, nope. Toast, nope. What? I know. Coffee's not on here. I'm telling you, it's not on here. Let me read it again. <laughs> nope, it's not on here. Um, okay, I'll give you the answers if you want. That's unbelievable. Tea and coffee should be. I agree. Although, like I said, with coffee, I tend to think half and half versus milk. Personally, same with my mom. Even though I'm not a big coffee drinker, I would still prefer half and half over milk. But um, regardless, coffee and tea should be on there because that's people drink milk with it. Ice cream, nope. Um, cake, yes, that's number five with two points. Okay, white sauce, you have to have milk for that. White sauce is not on here. <laughs> Ridiculous. I know, Crystal. Very interesting. Coffee, ice cream, and milk. <laughs> yeah, ice cream, it doesn't. <clears throat> All right, so cereal, 60 points. Cookies, 21 points. Brownies, three points. Macaroni and cheese, two points, which I was like macaroni and cheese, but that was an ingredient into it, which, again, you would tend to think ice cream, whatever. But then cake, two points. Pancakes, two points. And peanut butter, two points. Yes, 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 and yes, yes with all of them. <laughs> but I'm surprised coffee and tea are not on there. Rice pudding, nope. All right. Hold on. All right, I'm going to do this one first. <laughs> this one would be good. Oh, that's an interesting one. Okay. All right. 
attacked the audience who was asked this question. <laughs> Give me a phrase containing the word hot. Give me a phrase containing the word hot. Okay. Love your laugh there, Natalie. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. Now I want ice cream. <laughs> I want ice cream <laughs> or a popsicle. Oh my gosh, we have the best. Hold on a second. Remind me about the best popsicles. Hot tamale, number one with 13 points. Way to go, Crystal. You are hot. Nope, not quite. It's hot outside. Yep, number four with five points. Hot stuff nope drop it like it's hot <laughs> nope hot potato nope some like it hot number three with eight points hot mama nope tamales is number one hey natalie and miley and all in the room hey Teresa, welcome how are you i can't believe you guys didn't get the number two one hot hot Hot. What is she? Come on, guys. You can get it. I know you can. You know what she is. Put hot in front of it. Oh, but now S-H-E is up and all in my business. And yes, hot dog. Number two with eight points. Never thought of it at all. <laughs> I know, it's too obvious. Blow hot and cold. Nope. Um, treat, nope. I said it. You got me, Mayor. <laughs> Leanne, yep, that's it. All right, so Tamale was number one with 13. Dog with eight. Some like it hot with eight. Outside with five. Sauce with five. And that's hot with four. All right, Ugh. my top coat is, has been peeling for like the last week and it's really irritating me. Might as well just take it off, right? Okay, anyway. All right. Tell me an occupation you feel is done better when it's done by a woman. Tell me an occupation you feel is done better when it's done by a woman. There are eight answers. Interesting. Hot sauce. Was sauce on there? Yep, that was number five with five points. Um, government. Well, politics is on here. Eight with three points. Housekeeping, number three with 10 points. Nurse is number two with 11 points. <laughs> Everything. Love it, Mayor. That's not on here, unfortunately, but yes. Nurse, number two. Doctor is not on here. Nurse, yep. Cleaner, worst luck. <laughs> Housekeeping is number three with 10 points. <laughs> I agree with Mayor, though. President, there you go. Um. Cook is not on here. Teacher is number one with 12 points. Way to go, Amy. Race car driver. Nope, not on here. So you guys got teacher, nurse, housekeeper, and politics or government. Um, I don't think you got the other ones. One of them, so teacher was number one, 12 points, nurse, 11 points, housekeeping, 10 points, mother with six points. Yeah, that is better done as with a woman. Secretary, four points, daycare, three points, hairdresser, three points, and politics, three points. Nope, prof well, teacher is on here, but not professor specifically. 
This is an interesting one or a good one. Well, a man can't be a mother. I know, right? So whatever. Anyway, name and occupation. It goes to show how some of these people answer the questions. Um, name and occupation to stay away from if you have a short temper. Name and occupation to stay away from if you have a short temper. temper. There are six answers. I would have to agree with, um, yeah, although one of them I think is borderline, but teachers number two with 13 points, sales is not on here specifically, customer service is number three with nine points. Police is number one with 15 points. DMV. <laughs> Rentals is not. Lawyer is not. Uh, waitress is number six with three points. Phone operator, I'll, we'll say customer service. That's number three with nine. Post office, it does not say that specifically. Daycare, kindergarten, teacher. Teacher is number two with 13 points. Doesn't say specifically what grade or daycare, but doctor is not on here. Lawyer is not on here. Teacher is number two. <laughs> bill collector, you want one with a bad attitude, I guess. But no, bill collector is not on here. Customer services, a good one, Don. <laughs> Telemarketing, tax department, yeah. Um, so, occupations to stay away from if you have a short temper. Police is number one with 15. Teacher with 13. Customer service with nine. Nurse with five. Referee with three. And waitress with three. Referee is the only one that I'm not really, I mean, I guess referees tend to be kind of like even keel maybe, but I would, I don't know. Unemployment office. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Name something that little kids eat that leaves telltale evidence on their faces. Name something that little kids eat that leaves telltale evidence on their faces. And there are six answers. No, you don't, Natalie. I got in a lot of trouble over the course of 15 years of being a bill collector. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, chocolate. Number one, chocolate candy with 55 points. Chocolate candy. Um, crayons, no. Evidence on their faces. Chocolate, chocolate, and candy is number one. Milk is number six with three points. Ice cream is number two with 18 points. Lipstick, nope. Spaghetti, no, but tomato sauce, yes. Uh, number three with seven points. And well, I guess the kids eat lipstick. For Aussie kids, Vegemite. Is it, did I say that right? Hey, welcome back, Anita. All right, so chocolate candy was number one with 55 points. Ice cream, number two with 18. Tomato sauce with seven. Cookies with six. Hot cocoa with four. And milk with three. I was like, I, I figured you meant PB and J, but I'm like, please and J. Okay. <laughs> How on earth do y'all get kids to eat Vegemite? What is Vegemite? Cutting their own hair. Cheetos. Yeah, Cheetos would definitely show evidence with kids. What is Vegemite? I think I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is. I, I, I think of like vegetable bouillon cubes for some reason. I don't know. That's what I think of. Um, stupid autocrat. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I, I was going to read it PB and J regardless, even though it says please, but I was like, please and J it's gotta be PB and J it's auto incorrect. My friend, just the way it is. It's auto incorrect. Cause it's very rarely correct these days, at least for me. 
I seriously, I'll type something out and I have to read it consistently to make sure that it is correct. Because if I start typing, 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 type, typing, typing, and I go back to read it, and then I'm like, what the heck did I mean? Because this changed it completely. I mean, it puts in my, it puts in different thoughts. It puts in different, I mean, seriously, I said what I wanted to say. Keep it that way. Why are you going to change it? All right. So next one. Uh, hold on. I think we're going to do that one first. <laughs> yep, that one. I thought there was going to be something else there. Ugh, oh, there's so many I want to do. Okay. I have four more that, okay, stand corrected. You're right. <laughs> All right. Name something everyone knows about pigs. Name something everyone knows about pigs. There are seven answers. <laughs> and if you're like me, you forgot what you were trying to say, and now autocorrect has you totally pissed off. Exactly. It's a black spread we grow up on. It's a salty and yeasty spears full of goodness. We love it. Do you have Marmite or Promite? It's very similar. Not that I not that I know of. <laughs> Bacon does not have it on here. They stink. Yep. Um, dirty is what they have uh, with 11 points. They go oink. Yep, that's number three with seven points. Uh, they like mud, dirty, 11 points. Uh, curly tail is number two with seven points. They like bathing in the mud. Well, sloppy, I guess, um, with six points. They snort. Well, that's oink with seven points. They love water. Not on here. Good to eat. <laughs> Have curly tails is number two with seven points. They love mud. What pigs do they <laughs> eat anything? Eat a lot is number with four points. Um, they provide good meat. They are tasty. They eat scraps. Curly tails. Curly tails is number two. Um <clears throat> Well, they have dirty with 11 points, curly tails with seven, oink with seven, sloppy with six, fat with five, eat a lot with four, and that they are pink with four. Snuffle. I know, right? Ellie and curly tails, they eat scraps, fat. Yeah, fat was number six, no, number five with five points. All right. They're, when I was a little girl, they escaped all the time, and we'd have to get them back in their pen. Oh, my goodness. That would be that would be fun. <laughs> Not. All right, next one. Name a kind of car. Okay, I have a hair that's, like, flying around in front of my eyes, and it's driving me crazy. Name a kind of car driven by men who have something to prove. Name a kind of car driven by men who have something to prove. There is a car that is not on here that I would definitely add. There are eight answers. Ferrari is number four with eight points. Crackle and Ham, we named our piggies oh, many years ago. Corvette is number two with 14 points. Porsche is number eight with six points. We got the Ferrari uh, convertible is not on here. It's a specific um, make. Lamborghini is number six with six points. Mercedes is number seven with six points. Man, you guys are getting these good. You got Corvette. You got Ferrari. You got Lamborghini, Mercedes, Porsche. Rolls Royce is not on here, but should Mustang is not on here. Um, I think Bulgatti should be on here is not, or an Aston Martin, but is not. Uh, Tesla is not on here. That's a good one. Also, um, I also think um, um, a Bentley 
should be on here, but is not. SUV, not on here. T-Bird, not on here. Um, did you guys get that one? Yeah, you got Corvette. One that has three letters in its name. Like, the, the it's three letters. Uh, one has three, like, the first one and then the two and then the three. Uh, Bentley isn't, but should be BMW is the one I was talking about. That is number three with eight points. Range Rover is a good one too, but not on here. Um, but the one that I was talking about, it's the big one. And then there's the number two, which is slightly smaller, the number three, that's slightly smaller. And then the original original, which is military. You guys should get that. It's also, um, you can give someone it. <laughs> Hummer, yes. Um, that is number five with eight points. I think we got them all. Oh, no, number one, nobody's gotten. A, I think of it as an old man car, but I guess it's not. I guess the big ones are, but. What? What'd I say? Oh, Hummer. <laughs> you can give some of that. Limo is not on here. No. But the first one, guys, it I think of it as an old man. It's not because it's a beautiful. There are beautiful versions of it. Mary Kay has a line of pink ones. Thank you. Anita got it. Cadillac. That's number one with 14 points. So we got Cadillac with 14, Corvette with 14, BMW with eight, Ferrari with eight, Hummer with eight, Lamborghini with six, Mercedes with six, and Porsche with six. Now, Lamborghini, I would have thought would have been a little bit higher up than Cadillac, but I guess whatever. Um... <laughs> Okay, we asked 100 single women, name something you do on New Year's Eve when you don't have a date. We asked 100 single women, name something you do on New Year's Eve when you don't have a date. There are six answers. I would have thought something was on here that isn't, but probably isn't because this is a family game. <laughs> They had those all backwards. I know. They really did. Cry is number six with two points. Go to the bar. Go out party is number 222 and get drunk. is, But that doesn't necessarily mean at the bar. Uh, is number three with 17 points. Dance, not specifically. Just kidding. Um, go to bed early is number four with 13 points. Drink. Yeah, get drunk is number three, 17 points. Go out with friends. Go out and party is number two, 22 points. Drink, get drunk. Yep. Uh, life my ass up. I was just smart ass with cry. But cry is number six. Uh, have date night with Bob. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. But nope, that's not on here. Uh, shop is not on here. Um <laughs> kiss a lot of randoms yeah that would be cool but nope um watch a movie number one is stay home and tv with 40 points uh shop for yarn totally 100 percent. babysit not on here stay home number one with 40 points i th think no there are two that i don't think came up Oh, go to bed early was on here, number four, four with 13 points. So I think there's one that I don't think I saw an answer for, and that's eat. Sleep through it, yeah. Um, stay home TV is 40 points. Uh, go out party, 22. Get drunk, 17. Go to bed early, 13. Eat, three. And cry, pout is number two, or I mean with two points. All right. All right, 
Nate, can't remember the last time I did anything for New Year's Eve. Yeah, my mom and I just hang out because there's too many drunk people on the roads. I'm sorry. I don't need to get in the mix of that. And it's not like I have a bunch of friends to go out and party with on New Year's Eve. So we hang out at home. We make our did I did I post a picture of our um, New Year's Eve eats? But we make deviled eggs, chocolate covered strawberries and mandarins and nuts and marshmallows and stuff. Um, we have champagne. Well, actually, we had non-alcoholic, um, this really good, um, it wasn't just grape, but it was a cranberry grape, I think, something fabulous brand that we uh, we uh, we get. But that, and we also had alcoholic champagne. But we just hang out at home because I can't go out. She's so terrified. She was, I've never seen her. She, I gave her her sedative like two hours before. I think that was messing with her. Plus the, she was so terrified. I mean, even her nails were trembling. Um, her toes, her feet, her every, her eyelashes, everything was trembling. And she was panting so hard, harder than even after a heavy exercise. I was t I was actually scared for her because she was so so scared, but she finally calmed down after a couple hours. But um, Netflix and wine, yep. Me either. You're an overhook, and it's my hubby's birthday. Ah, well, happy belated birthday. I think I may have said I don't remember. Wine or wine? <laughs> we had our kids and grand loves over. A few close friends. It's all we need. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, both. Dawn, um, we never go out. We always say, and yeah, even my ex-husband and I used to do that too. We were just, you know, we had our neighbors, a, a close friend, a close couple friend that used to come over and that's all we did. Um, all right. Name a movie that took place on the water. Name a movie that took place on the water. There are five answers. I know of three for sure, but Titanic is number one with 38 points. Way to go, Crystal. Castaway, good movie, but nope. Jaws is number two with 20. Cape Fear is not. One of them, if I remember correctly, was underwater for most of it water world yep number three with six points pirates of the caribbean nope okay so you guys have two more and the two last ones oh that area on my foot is itching again almost burning it's really weird nope not oceans 11 The next to last one has two words in it. Actually, the last two, the, the last two have, both have two words in it. One, the last one also has a color, a color in the title. And a month. The name of a month and a color. Let's see if you can figure that one out. Mag, nope. Finding Nemo, nope. Noah's Ark, no. Nope. Little Mermaid, nope. Blue Lagoon, nope. You got it, Crystal. Red October. <laughs> That's the last one with three points. And then you have number four that is... Um, I don't know how I can give you hints because I don't know the movie. So... It's hard for me to give hints that aren't just the name itself. But, yep, Leanne, Crystal got it first, though. <laughs> Ugh, I'm trying to think of a way to give you clues for this for this one. Um, I just don't know. All right, so Titanic was one with 38. Jaws was 20 points. Waterworld, six. Open Water was the one I was talking about is three and then Red October with three. Never seen Red October. Oh, great movie. Autocorrect worked for me this time. <laughs> Too funny. 
All right. Oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> okay, we're going to do two more. Okay, um, we're going to do... We're going to do three more, and then we're going to call it a night. Never heard of open water me either. So I had no other than trying to tell you clues for those two words. I had no idea how else to do it. Um, oh, I just thought of it. I was going through the months. Good job, Crystal. <laughs> me either. Okay, step one is done on my soup. It smells so good. Oh, cool. I wish we had smell-o-vision or something where I can smell it. I watched Red October once. Yeah, it's a great movie. I think it's a great movie. Sean Connery. Um, all right. So three more, and then we're going to call it a night. Yeah. Um, all right. Tell me an expression with the word monkey in it. There are four answers. Tell me an expression with the word monkey in it. Hey, Sin. Welcome. How are you? We're playing um, Family Feud. We're going through three more questions, and then we're calling it a night. Um, hey, Lorley, how are you? Did I miss you? Uh, okay, so tell me an expression with the word monkey in it. So business is number one with 26 points. Monkey see, monkey do is number two with 17 points. Monkey business, number one. Monkey around, nope, monkey business, we already got. Not my monkey, not my circus, not on here. Good one, but not on here. Cheeky monkey, nope. Uh, monkey face, nope. Monkey see, monkey do, yes. Hi, sin, hi, sin. Monkey wrench, nope. Hi, everyone. Okay, nope. So two of them you guys got, two of them not. And she, her nickname is monkey for me and pumpkin for my mom. But, um... You guys should get these last two. Um, that's not going to be a great hint. But maybe. Like, what is this? Back here. Oh, right there. I, we'll see what comes of that. I wasn't, I wasn't pointing to my butt. Monkey on back is number three with 13 points. Nope, monkey around is not on there. Um, how do I do it without? Um, I can't think of a way to do it without. Um, it's, it's key gets in my way. <laughs> Barrel full of monkeys. Nope. Um, monkeys something you guys should know that just from that bread monkey bread nope pluralize monkey monkeys at least I've heard it throughout my life, but jumping monkey, nope. I'll give you another minute, and then I'm going to tell you. Do, 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 do. I'm just kidding. I got nothing. <laughs> to monkey around, nope. All right, I'm not giving you a minute. I'm going to tell you now. It's Monkey's Uncle. So Monkey Business with 26, Monkey C, Monkey Do with 17, Monkey on Back with 13, and Monkey's Uncle with 8. Monkey's on the bed to monkey around. Nope, nope. All right, so next. Name something you do a lot slower when you have a hangover. There are five answers. 
<laughs> Walk is number one with 16 points. Name something you do a lot slower when you have a hangover. Walk is number one. Move is number two with 15. Talk is not. Everything is number five with nine points. I don't get hangovers. <laughs> Think is number three with 14 points. Get out of bed is number four with 11 points. You guys got it. This is the first time I think you guys got all the answers. So walk is number one with 16, move with 15, think with 14, get out of bed with 11, and everything with nine points. Awesome. All right. Where do you see a lot of people waiting for a ride? There are six answers. Where do you see a lot of people waiting for a ride? <gasps> I always have a hard time getting out of bed. Yeah, me too. Curb, not specifically. Bus stop is number one with six, 61 points. Bus stop, bus stop, bus stop. Yep. School, not on here. Train station, train subway is number five with six points. Taxi queue, no, not on here, believe it or not. Airport is number three with nine points. Roller coaster, that's amusement park, so that's number two with ten points. Front porch, nope. Okay, so there are two other ones. What are we? I'm the naughty naked. So standing, waiting for a ride. No, not hotel. <laughs> Voting line, no. Bathroom, no. Hey, Brenda, welcome. How are you? Street corner. That's number four with eight. And then there's one more. <laughs> no, not police station. How can I? Mm. No, not jail. What? Oh, I thought I thought you misspelled it because I saw jail and then you said or jail and I'm like, but it wasn't you. Um, nope. Mall is the last one with two points. So you got bus stop with sixty one points, amusement park with amusement park with ten. Airport with nine, street corner with eight, train subway with six, and mall with two. Bar. <laughs> um, so I think we did. We actually went through more than half the deck. These are really little games. Kind of bugged me, actually. I mean, this is the size of the box. It's like a little. I think there's like a hundred and. No, 54 cards. Really, that's not much at all. But And we went through this many, and we have that many left. Um, we can go through a couple more if you want. You tell me. Do a couple more or enough? Actually, this one would be kind of cool. That's silly. Um, it was fun though. Yeah, do you guys want to do another one or do you want to? Are we done? Name something. Oh. I start. <laughs> I started reading one. 
Oh, this one is good too. One more, okay. Um, all right, we got three more, and then we'll, then we're really calling it a night because it's two hours and five minutes, and I said max two hours, so we're gonna do three more. Um, it was fun. I had I'm having fun. Uh, I gotta go to bed. Have doctor's appointment out of town. Okay, Dawn, have a great night. Thank you so much for being here. As always, love you, my friend, and have. Well, I have a good appointment, or I hope it comes out good. Um, but drive safely, please, my friend. It was fun. One more. Still working slack in. <laughs> Can keep going. Hello. Blessed is home with love. Okay, sounds good. Good night, Natalie and everyone. Good night, my my dear friend, Dawn. Love, hugs, and prayers to you. Sweet dreams. This is fun. Night, Dawn. Yeah, I think it's fun, too. Okay, so name a place. Name a place stressed out people go to feel better. Name a place stressed out people go to feel better. There are six answers. Um, sweet dreams, Don. Absolutely. Uh, Jim, actually, well, no. Nope, not on their spot. Sauna is number one with 23. Church is number four with four. Bar is number two with 21. A uh, bar or club. Salon, no. A friend's house, no. We got church. Yarn store, totally, Leanne. I'm right there with you. Bed, no. Family, no. This is fun. I'm having fun. Wait, I think I missed something. Hold on a second. Sorry for the earthquake. I missed something, I thought. My right, my left click on my mouse pad on my laptop doesn't work. The different things don't work the right way, and it's really irritating. Um, bath is not on here. Spa sauna is. Road trip, nope. Shopping, no. Grandma's house, no. Mall, no. Mall retail therapy, nope. Therapist, yeah, well. Yeah, I don't think that. Falls, falls under what they said. Beach is number three with nine. So we've got spa, spa, sauna with 23, bar, club with 21, beach with nine, church with four, massage parlor with four. Personally, that would be like number one. Although at the spa, you can also get massages. So, uh, And then last is rehab slash clinic with four. Um, beach, beach sounds awesome, except I hate sand. I know. And I live in Florida, right? Um, just go for a walk. Yeah. Retreat. Totally. All right. Next one. Name a reality show. You'd probably be voted off of the first week. All of them. So name a reality show. You'd be, you'd probably be voted off of the first week. Wow, you guys are um, must be thinking right now. Survivor is number one with 44 points. <laughs> Family Feud, uh, nope. Uh, I should give you a red X. I don't remember there being blue Xs on Family Feud, but what do I know? Anyway, so Survivor is number one. Big Brother is number two with 15 points. Naked and Afraid is not on here, believe it or not. The Race, nope. Nope, and there are six answers. You guys have gotten two of them. Housewives of Everywhere, no, <laughs> nope. Idol, American Idol is number three with 12 points. 
All right, so you guys got three more. How do I... I can't think of how to... I don't really know many reality shows. I know, me neither. Master Chef? No, but Top Chef is number six with three points. The Voice? Nope. Got Talent? Nope. I'm trying to think how to give you hints for these two, last two. Um, cooking show, no. The voice, no. Okay, so I'm just going to give you America's Got Talent. All right, so Survivor was number 44. Big Brother, 15. American Idol, 12. Fear Factor, 4. Hell's Kitchen, 4. And Top Chef, 3. All right, so last one. Then we're saying good night. Do you have married at first sight? What? Bachelorette? Nope. Um, do you have married at first sight? Oh, I think we do. I don't know. I really don't know reality TV shows. Um, I used to a little bit more, but I never watched them. But I think we have... I'm almost positive I remember seeing a Married at First Sight. Forgot about Fear Factor. I know. I was trying to figure out, you know, but I can't react like with a, um, like a gasp or anything without her going ballistic. So, okay. So, last one. Forgot about, oh, I already read that one. Um, name, <laughs> name something, Adele. This should be right in your, yeah, anyway. Uh, name, actually, it would have been good for, yeah. Anyway, name something that's a bigger in Texas. Name something that's bigger in Texas. There are six answers. Oh, crap, what, what? American Ninja. Oh, crap. Adele? Oil is not on here. Scott, um, food as a general thing? No. Sky? No. Rabbits? <laughs> no. Hats is number one with 15 points. Hair is not on here. Everything is bigger in Texas. Everything is number two with eight points. Cattle is number four with seven. Houses, nope. Uh, steaks is number five with seven. Egos is number three with eight. Steaks, yeah, steaks is number seven because number four because of because number four is bigger in Texas, steaks are therefore bigger in Texas. Feet, <laughs> no boots, no. Okay, you guys give up. Sports stadiums, not on here. All right, so hats was with 15 points, everything with eight, egos with eight, cattle with seven, which bigger cattle gives you bigger stakes, which is number five with seven, and then waitress is with three points. I don't get that one. Name something that's bigger in Texas and it has waitress. I'm missing something, I think. Anyway, you know what they say about big feet? <laughs> yes, big feet and big hands. I can say the big hands totally holds true. Yep, totally. Anyway, that is it for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed the Family Feud game. I'm going to put the ones we've gone through underneath the little flap so we don't get them mixed up. 
I'll put the ones we haven't gone through there. And then we've got friends. And I have another one that I'm waiting to get here, but I think it's not going to get here until like maybe next week or something. I am tired. Um, and I have to work on the blanket for a couple hours because they have to carry the big snakes, big waitress. Hey, that makes sense. Um, I'm like really, really tired now. I don't, I, all of a sudden I got like, whew. Ha ha ha, Natalie. Yeah, we're not talking about it. I just made a statement, but we're not talking about it. Just saying. Anyway, it was fun night, night, Natalie and everyone. It, it was fun. I had fun. I, I hope you guys did too. And I really like what the idea of doing the games. And, um, because we always, we always have a lot of fun when we go like retro or we talk movies or, or food, or candies, or music, that kind of stuff. We always have fun when we do that. So I figured this would be something that would be nice. Good night, ladies. Thanks for being here. Big hugs to all. Stay safe. Sweet dreams. Thank you, Adele. Same to you. Big hands, big gloves. Is that what you mean? Big feet, big socks. <laughs> yeah. Wink, wink. That's what I mean. It was fun. Yes. Thank you so much for stopping by, Brenda. I really do appreciate it. Uh, have a good night, everyone. I need to rest my shoulder now. Yes, please go do that. Um, size matters in Texas. Size matters everywhere. Uh, I just caught the end. Hello, everyone, and good night at the same time. Oh, I'm sorry, Brenda, but I'm glad you stopped by. Thank you so much. Hey, Brenda, and bye, too. Sweet dreams, everyone. No, don't make me go back to work. Oh, I'm sorry, Anita. Bye, by um, Brenda. Thank you so much for being here. Night, Natalie and Miley and Mama Larissa. Wink, wink. Say no more. <laughs> <coughs> you made me choke there. Um, sweet dreams, everyone. I will send good night, sweetie. <laughs> um, all right. So anyway, have a great night, my friends. Thank you so much for being here. I had a lot of fun. I'm glad you guys did too. Love, hugs, and prayers to everybody. Extra prayers for those who need it. She says hi and bye to her peeps. Um, I will have Wednesday's video going up tomorrow because it's Wednesday. It is Christmas Eve for us, so I'm going to really try to get... I, I still have to record that video. But we are going to have another video coming up on our kitchen channel. We had one go up yesterday. We're having another one go up tomorrow. Um, that is not going to be a regular schedule. It's just because it's a Christmas thing, but Christmas Eve is tomorrow. That's our big meal. And then Christmas day obviously is Thursday. Uh, but I will have a video up tomorrow. I'm going to be going through two or three small businesses. I'm not quite sure how many, cause I want to try to pace it since I haven't received several of them because of shipping issues. But um, remember, for every season, there's a reason to crochet. Hold on. Good night, sweetie. Good night. Oh, well, it's all good. Have a good night. Oh, you too, Anita. Thank you. Uh, I know. I know. I, I can't say it again. <laughs> night to all an awesome live chat. I only catch you next time. Thank you, Leanne. I appreciate that. Is your mom's, I'm not talking about it. Nope, it's not. I completely, I feel bad because she feels ridiculously guilty. She feels like she set me up for failure. I told her it was my fault because when I, while we were at the local yarn shop and she was giving me the challenge and I was going to be getting my fantasy yarn, I misjudged the time frame and what I was getting myself into. I mean, typically I use baby blanket yarn for baby blankets, which is a chunky yarn for small blankets, which of course take less time. And even an adult Afghan in the same chunky weight yarn is a lot faster. However, now I'm using a thick DK or thin worsted weight yarn for a huge blanket. And I would, I was, I was guesstimating four to six hours I would have needed to finish it in that time frame. Honestly, having gone through the numbers again, I would have needed at least six to eight hours a day to finish it by the seventh, which I more often than not don't have more than an hour max to work on crochet during the day or during the week. So I completely misjudged it. It is not done. I'm hope. 
My mom feels horrible and guilty because she feels she set me up for failure. Not that she thinks I have failed and not at all. But I told her I was the one that messed up here. And I, but I feel horribly guilty because it's not going to be done for Christmas. And that was the, what she really, really wanted. And I accepted the challenge, but um, I have figured out the numbers and we're going to be talking about it. And I'm going to be asking her for the amount of days that I need to be able to finish it doing X amount of rows a day minimum. So we're going to see where that goes. But she also, she was, her concern was, is that I was going to let all of you guys down and you guys were going to be very disappointed in the fact that I did not match, meet another end of a project like I haven't on other ones and that you guys were just going to like, I don't know about give up on me, but be disappointed. But anybody that knows about doing a blanket with a thick DK or thin worsted weight that's as large as this one is going to be would know that you need a lot of time to put into it if you're going to do it in six weeks. And I don't have that kind of time. So, I'm hoping you guys will forgive me, and but I am going to continue to work on it. I'm going to be working on it probably all night tonight and likely all night tomorrow night after dinner and everything to try to get as much done as possible by Thursday um, and then go from there. But we will see. Um, enjoy your celebration, Natalie. Hugs to you, your mom and Miley. Thank you so much, Leanne. And we will enjoy tomorrow. We are putting up, um, our easy version of botched, our version of like a wine consistency, meaning like a claret soup that is just liquid, no veggies and stuff. Um, it's our version not the easy way is not our regular version, but it's our version of the wine like consistency. It looks like a red wine. There's no wine in it, but um, that's going to be going up tomorrow. We had the cookie that went up yesterday, which is like, yeah. So just make sure to get out, but it's an amazing bosch. It's a familial recipe and it's just an easier version that we somehow made up one year when my, yeah, you'll see it on the video. But um, thank you so much, Leanne. We are never disappointed. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. I do feel that sometimes I let you guys down because I'll say, oh, I'm working on this and I'll have it done and whatever. And then I don't end up getting it done. And that happens more often than not. And so my mom's like, you keep telling everybody you're going to be making these things and then you never end up finishing them or never even making them. And they're just not, they're just going to give up on you one day. And I'm like, I know because I feel that way also without her I have I always feel that way but I'm really hard on myself um but this I really did misjudge I it was the excitement of the situation and didn't stop to think about the yarn at the time because I wasn't even sure what yarn was going to be used. And then once I realized it, I should have really thought about it and realized, okay, this isn't a baby blanket. It's not chunky yarn. And uh, yeah, so it is what it is, but I do really appreciate that Kelly. That, that means a lot. Um, Never will give up on you. Thank you, Sin. I really do appreciate that also, like sin very sincerely. Uh, it's a very big task. Anyone who makes blankets knows how long they take. Please don't feel sad about it. Let Larissa know, please. I know, I know. And any, you're right. Anybody that knows, anybody that makes blankets knows what, how much, what goes into it and how long they take. I mean, and I know with the, oh, I forgot to show you guys the crocodile stitch blanket and the lotus flower again, because they were sitting there and I happened to mention them. But I remember the crocodile stitch blanket. If I actually thought about, if I actually of hours it took to put into it. Now, of course, this was my very first project. So it took me a bit longer than let's say it would take me now, but, um, I think a good that see that sounds like a lot, but I think I had figured out at the time it was like 60 hours, maybe longer. I can't remember. It's been several years now. 
Um, but that's a lot of time, especially when you don't have that kind of time on a regular basis every day to work on it. So uh, you'll finish it. It'll be fine. You are awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kelly. That means a lot. I appreciate that. Um, I'm still working on still like, <laughs> I know Adele, we had that conversation and I know what I got to do. Um, and when you're working with that small yarn, it takes longer. It really does. I mean, seriously, it takes me, honestly, it takes me between 20, it took me 23 minutes when I was really focused and doing it fast. But as, on average, it takes me 23 so I think it was 25 minutes to do one row and one row doesn't even get me half an inch. It's like three rows will get me like an inch and a quarter, I think is what it was. So an hour, more than an hour for three rows and there's 65 inches and that only gets me one and maybe a quarter inches. So there's a lot of time that goes into it. But anyway, I'm not giving up. I'm not just putting it away. I'm definitely going to make it. It just, I'm going to, it's going to have to take, I'm guessing based on the calculations I did, if I did six rows a day, I think I would need with what I have. I mean, I worked literally, you can ask my mom because I was in her house the day after Christmas. So Saturday and Sunday after Christmas, that's basically all I did. I mean, I had to take breaks because I can't sit for very long at, for stretches at a time, but prim that's primarily what I worked on on Saturday and Sunday, like all day. And I got maybe, I don't know. I, it just, it's not, it's somehow not adding up in my head the way mathematically I thought it was going to, but it it's, yeah, anyway. So I'm not giving up. I'm figuring if I get six, it was six rows done a day, which would be uh, three hours a day minimum, a little over three hours a day maybe three and a half hours a day. I think if I got 15 more days, I should be able to finish it. And that's staying with that schedule. And then if I gave if then I was going to give myself like maybe three days so I can actually sew in the ends versus cutting them. So we're looking at 15 to 18 days for me to finish it. So I'm hoping, you know, my mom will be okay with that and won't be too disappointed that she's not getting it on Christmas day. But at the same time, I don't want her feeling guilty that she feels she set me up for failure because she didn't. I was the one that totally misjudged. She doesn't know what, what, how much time and what goes into what the variables are when it comes to a blanket. So, um, I love you, Natalie. You're sweet to die. I love you too, my friend. Your hands cramp up. I don't necessarily, and it's funny because I have carpal tunnel and arthritis, but my hands don't necessarily, I mean, I'm working with a 4.5 millimeter hook, um, which is my kind of sort of my standard um, size, but, well, no, I do go smaller with the fingering weights, but uh, surprisingly enough, knock on wood, I don't have that many issues with my hands cramping up. It's more my back, my hip and everything else hurting. So I have to take breaks like every hour for at least a few minutes. And then sometimes then I get distracted and then there's something else that happens and then whatever. And then it's like, I can go back. So it's kind of like a vicious cycle, but it'll get done. Um, but not that my hands don't cramp up ever, but that's not normally what makes me have to take a break every hour or so. I must time a row on the huge blank doing I feel like a sloth on this. I just can't get more than four or five rows a day. And that's pushing it to where I feel guilty that I crochet for too long. Yeah, I know that same thing. Yeah, I know that I, I totally get that. Uh, same here. And the only reason I timed how long it takes me to get across is because Ellen and I were talking because she was one of the ones that was, you know, signed up to keep me honest with this. 
And she's like, why don't you figure out how long it takes you to get across and how many rows you would need to do a day in order to be able to make it. And the only thing I figured out was how long it took me to get across. I never actually went into seeing how many rows I would have to do a day to be able to finish it. So again, it's all on me. Misjudging and mis just totally not even thinking about, you know, so it just was, yeah. Anyway, it will get done, but I really need to go because I'm literally like almost falling asleep. So I love you guys dearly. I had a lot of fun tonight. We will do another game next week. Uh, love, hugs, and prayers to you all. Extra prayers for any that may need it. Um, and you guys know I love you to pieces. I mean, you guys are absolutely amazing. All of you are absolutely amazing. Uh I thought you were telling me night on your previous message. What? Oh, because she said night Adele. <laughs> All right. So you guys will see my video go up tomorrow with a, a couple of small businesses, which is what Wednesdays are about, our small online businesses and um, some yarns that came in with that. And... I don't know if I'm going to show my mom's blanket tomorrow because I don't know how much I'm going to get done. Uh, but we will play that by ear. I hope you guys enjoyed Monday's video and that you enjoy this Wednesday series that I'm going to be doing. And absolutely. I'll pray for your family, Kelly. I hope everything is okay. Um, but you all are in my prayers and of course your families as well. Ian was agreeing with me about trying to like you. Oh, <laughs> stop spreading that no I'm just kidding um, I can get you guys to like me or to continue to like me I'll figure out a way I'm hot right now all of a sudden I just got like super hot Natalie the queen of long goodbye exactly I gotta live up to my reputation so anyway I do love you guys and I will see you will see me tomorrow and then we will both see you guys next Tuesday. So have a great night. Love, hugs, and prayers to you guys. And if anybody that happens to watch this celebrates Christmas January 7th like we do, Merry Christmas to you guys. Um, prayers, Kelly. Get some rest, everyone. Tomorrow's another day. Exactly, Angela. So truly and get going. Okay. I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Miley says hi and bye to her peeps. My mom says thanks to all her for all your thoughts and prayers also. I love you guys. Bye. <laughs>